Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to what is going to be a really short video on a plugin that I really, really enjoy. That fixed a lot of problem with the way I was using my uh, controllers before. So my Xbox 360 controller, everything was based around that. But then at one point, one guy came in and tried to play my game with a PS4 controller, which just messed up the whole thing because my game was not really set up for his controller. And uh, eventually we discovered that we can use in control, which is a really nice plugin that I recommend that you use. Anyway guys, this is currently a free plugin that you can use to pretty much just um, deal with all your cross-platform controller problems. So if you have like games that are meant to be used by different controllers, so just like say Steam games and uh, you know, different people play with different controller on Steam. So I'm using a 360 controller, but somebody else could be using a PS4. Well, this is going to fix it. <laughs> Alright guys, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright guys, so to show you how easy it is to implement this in control plugin, um, I've got this Unity window here, and it is the window to create a new project, so that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Let's create a new project, save it somewhere, um, wherever you want, and I'll just call this in control test or in control tutorial. Something like that. On my side, of course. And it's pretty much just creating my new project right now. Now, um, what I've did, the next thing I've did is I went over to Google, typed in in control GitHub. Now, this is really important to do that you get the GitHub version. Well, if you want to try it out, you get the GitHub version. And uh, let me just show you this. So we go on this link. Now, the version we see here is pretty much just frozen on uh, version 1.4.4, but it still works quite well with Unity, uh, the version I'm using right now, which is Unity, what is it exactly? 5.4. So everything works super well in this version and this is pretty much just free. Now the real version of Unity uh, in control, sorry not Unity in control, but just the in control plugin can be found on the Unity Asset Store for about 40 bucks if I recall. Yep, so 40 bucks. You can buy it of course if you like it, but we don't really need to buy it at the moment because it's still up to date on the GitHub. So here's what I'm going to do. Click on download zip. I'm going to download this as is it and I'll just open this in Windows Explorer. Alright, now that we have our zip, I'm simply going to extract it, so extract here. I have my folder, and inside of this, you can find, um, you can pretty much just find the, um, the project files for another Unity project. Now all we really need in this is the asset folder, and that's what I'm going to copy over. Now I'm going to hit Ctrl X to cut, you could copy if you're scared of losing this, um, and I'm going to go inside of Unity, right click in my project folder, and in here, I am going to paste. So we already have a asset folder, that's fine. It's empty right now, so that's perfect. Now if it's not empty, just make sure that you only import these files. And in Unity, you should now be able to see these files in your folder. If we just wait a little bit for this to compile, import plugin, and you're gonna get some errors, but that's totally normal. That's because we have not set up this, um, this plugin just yet. So to set it up, all we really have to do is go over here under Edit, Project Settings, In Control, and do a Setup Input Manager. You click on that, and that's pretty much all you have to do for the setting up. Now um, you keep these file here. You need these file to just um, just have the plugin working, and you can build your game around that. So let's just test it out. Let's just have an object moving really quickly using these settings. Alright, so as you can tell right now in the um, in the console, what I've did is I've plugged in my Xbox 360 controller. So right now it's just it's plugged in on the computer and I can actually just use it for playing games on Steam or something like that. So Unity recognized that and we can actually use it to move as well in the game. Now this could be a PS3, a PS4, Xbox One controller, a Logitech controller. There is a lot of support here. So as you can tell, just look at this list here. There is a ton of things you could be supporting. Um, and all that pretty much just works. So I have my Xbox 360 here, controller, and I'm going to use that. Now there is something that you, you are going to need in every single scene that you want to use the plugin though. It's some kind of manager, it's some kind of um, manager like we do in the channel. It's an object, empty object that contains a script on it. Since I don't really have the object right here, have a empty game object and add the in control manager on it. So that's pretty cool, we can just leave it here and we'll just rename our object real quick. Now let's go ahead and just create a, um, a cube. We are going to create a new cube that's going to be the, our, well, we could call this our player, we could call this whatever we want really. This is what we're going to control. So let's call this something like player motor. 
I have a new C Sharp script that is called Player Motor, and and we're going to look at how exactly we're supposed to get access from the plugin. So it's fairly simple. All you really have to do up here is um, include in control. So using in control, and if I recall properly, you have to do something like private. You declare a device. So input device that you can call, say, uh, my joystick or something like that. I'll just call it joystick or controller if you want. In a in a private void awake or start, you're going to say joystick is equal to input manager dot active device, which is going to get you the one that is currently active, in my case the Xbox 360 controller. Now if you wanted to have like a second device, you can access it via this array here. So you can say uh, device at the index 1, I believe this would work, I'm not quite sure yet, I never really used it because I only have uh, one device here. But if we have a quick look at this, this looks like a read-only connection, so that's, that's a list that you can simply access like that, I believe. So this would work, but since I am not really using the uh, second index of the device, I am simply going to say active device, which is going to return me a input device type. And guys, that is pretty much it. You have your device, now you can do pretty much anything you want with it, so let's give this an example. Let's go ahead and just declare a private uh, void update, and try to move our transform based on, um, say, the left joystick. So transform dot position is plus equal to a new vector three and we'll just create that vector three using the axis on the joystick. So the X component of it is going to be joystick and now you have a lot of property you can use. There's a lot of buttons on the controller so you can use all of that D-pad, D-pad down. Um, there's a lot of stuff. In our case we're interested in the joystick, the left joystick. So I'm going to type in left stick and as you can tell we have the left stick button when you press on it you have the left stick itself that um, I'm not quite sure what it returns. We're going to have a look at that just afterward. And there's also left stick X, which is what I'm actually interested in right now. That's um, That could return me a float in the end. So that's my X. As far as zero goes, we're not moving in up and down. So I'm going to put that on zero and I'll just put the joystick left stick Y in the Z component. So this simple line like that is going to make my cube move. As you can tell, it's moving using the axis, so I'm just gonna, you know, tilt the joystick towards the right, and it's moving towards the right. If we're just placing this in the right direction, up, down, left, and it's all the right um, axis as well. Now, if this is inverted for some reason, you can go on the in control manager here and do an invert y axis. Now it's going in the other direction. Alright, so before we end this video, let's just um, let's just try another thing. So I'm just going to put my X in a float, another float, just like this. Float Y um, is equal to zero. Float Z is equal to joystick left stick Y, and I'll just replace that vector here. Now, um, what I wanted to try right here is buttons. Actually, how to use buttons on in control. So. What I'll do here is I'll say float y is going to equal to 1 if I press on a button, it's going to equal minus 1 if I press on another button. So this way I can actually go up and down using these buttons. So float y um, is equal to just, let's just declare it right here and then we'll check. So if joystick, right now I'm looking at the Xbox 360 controller and I want to actually use not the D-pad, not like these thing on the left. I want to use like the four buttons you see, and I think they're called action one, two, and three in this case, so we'll give it a try. If I'm pressing on action one, Y is going to equal to one, so we'll go up. Now, if I'm pressing on um, action, say two, we'll go down, so Y is equal to minus one. And let's actually give this a try. I think that's really all you have to do in this case. And if there's nothing, let's just put that on zero. Let's default it on zero so we don't have any errors. Alright, so right now I'm running the game and I'm going to try and press on these action buttons. So that's A and that's B. Okay, A and B would be equal to action 1 and action 2. I can still move around but I can go up and down using this A and B now. So we did some axis, we did some buttons and that's very simple stuff. 
Now I'm probably going to move over and use this plugin from now on because um, with the way I was doing it before and the way I've made a video about in the past, I was using Axis specifically for the Xbox 360 controller. Now if somebody would come in with a PS4 controller and they try my game, a few things would be inverted, buttons wouldn't work, so we'd have like that kind of problem. But now with this plugin, everything is pretty much just normalized and everything works. Thanks a lot for watching, thanks a lot for supporting me, and um, please leave a like if you enjoyed the video or if it helped you. Other than that, please check out the Patreon page and also subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching again, and I will see you next time.